Um, so this question is a um, grade 12 functions question, and it's touching, up, it's touching upon inverses and things like that. Right. So what they give us here is this over here, which is a exponential. All right. Now, question 8.1, or actually, I think I've got the question on the next page here. There we go. So the first question for two marks, very easy. It says, write down the equation of the inverse. Right. Some of you confuse first derivative with inverse. This is first derivative, which is part of calculus. And then when they put a minus one, then that is the inverse. Okay, so we are going to take the inverse. So what we do when we take the inverse is we first change it to a y. Then we switch the y's and the x's around. And then we're going to try to get the y value alone again. And we should remember that the inverse of an exponential is a log. So we're going to have to use some logs over here. Everyone's favorite. That's a joke. Um, so we're going to have y equals to log 3x. So over the years of teaching, I've learned all these nice ways of trying to explain things to people. But when it comes to logs, it just doesn't, logs are weird. Like trying to get people to remember the order of a log is really weird. Like people just struggle with that. Um, and, and if you struggle with it, it's, it's pretty normal. Like a lot of students struggle with it. Trying to remember what goes where when you're switching from an exponential to a log or whatever. Okay, so there's the answer. And then we should obviously just end it off the proper way by saying that the inverse of P is going to be equal to log 3x. Remember, guys, the inverse of an exponential is a log. And the inverse of a log is an exponential. They are inverses of each other. Right. So that's the first question done. Part two says, sketch in your answer book both of the graphs, P and the inverse. All right, so now we're gonna go draw some graphs. I haven't drawn graphs in months. Um, so let's go do that. Okay, so there's our X and Y diagram. They'll give you one in the answer book in your exam. Now we're gonna go draw P, which is um, the exponential. Now on the Kevin Math Science course, starting in grade 10 and grade 11, um, there's detailed explanations on how to draw every single type of graph, log, uh, exponential, hyperbola, straight line, parabola, all of those little things, okay? Um, now, the inverse, the inverse is a log graph, right? Now, it's not nice drawing a log graph, right? Uh, log graphs just aren't really nice, but that's okay. What we do is we draw the exponential because that's a little bit easier. And then we can just flip all of its coordinates around and that will be the log graph because inverses are just the flipped over version of each other, right? You switch the X's and the Y's. So let's draw the, the exponential graph. Okay, so let me just write it out again. Right, now an exponential graph usually has three different things. It has a y-intercept. It normally has an x-intercept, but not every time, an asymptote. And then if it doesn't have an x-intercept, then we might need to label another point. So let's start with the y-intercept. To do that, you make x zero. And so that's gonna give us uh, p of zero equals to three to the power of zero, which is one. And so therefore the y-intercept is at zero and one. So let's go label that. Right, then we need to find the x-intercept. To find an x-intercept, we make y zero. And you can try using whatever you like here. You can use logs, you can use whatever. You will never ever be able to get an answer for x. There's another offer if you find one, my car is yours. Um, you won't be able to find a value for x for that exponential. Um, you might get close to zero, but you and your calculator might even say zero if you make the value large enough. But 
That's just because the calculator cannot round. It has to round off eventually. But mathematically, it's actually impossible. Okay, so there's no, there's no x-intercept. Fine. So we go to the next one, the asymptote. Uh, the asymptote of an exponential is this number over here. That is the asymptote. So if they don't have a number there, then the asymptote is technically on the x-axis. So the asymptote is on the x-axis. You don't have to draw it. I'm just showing you guys, okay? So guys, we need, because, because there was no x-intercept, we need one other point, okay? So we need one other point. So how do we do that? Very easy. You just choose another point. So you choose an x value, let x equal to one. So let x equal to one. And then you need to go find the y value by plugging it into the equation. You can't choose the x and the y because then you're just making up a random point. So we're going to let x equal one. And then we're going to go plug that into the equation. And that's going to give us three. So when x is one, y is three. So we can go plot that as a point now. When x is one, y is three. There we go. And now we can draw our exponential. So it's going to go something like here and there. There's our exponential graph. Beautiful. All right. So that's how we would do that one. Okay, guys. So now, so remember that there is actually an asymptote for this exponential. We can say here that y equals to zero. That was the asymptote. Now, when you draw the inverse, it's easy. You're just going to switch everything around. Everything that you have found uh, for the exponential, you're just going to switch it. So for example, 0 and 1 is just going to become 1 and 0. 1 and 3 is just going to become 3 and 1. And then the asymptote of y equals to 0 is just going to become x equals to 0. And that will be enough information to be able to draw the log graph. So 1 and 0 is over there. Um, the asymptote is x equals to zero, which is this dotted line or this line over there. And then three and one, three and one would be somewhere over here. There we go. And then that's enough information. We can draw our log graph. Whoops. There's our log graph. Okay. So that's for four marks. Awesome stuff. Now we move on. This question says, um, what does this one say for, okay, it doesn't give us the marker location. What well, did give us the marker location earlier. This one is also for four marks. It says, determine the values of X for which the inverse is smaller than or equal to three. The inverse must be smaller than or equal to three. Right, so let's try break down what this actually means. What this means mathematically is, for which x values, for which x values is um, the y value of the inverse smaller or equal to three. So they want to know for which x values is the y values on the inverse smaller than three. So don't look at this three, that's an x value. We need to find out where the y value on this, on this uh, exponent, I mean, this log graph is equal to three. So that would probably be somewhere up here, right? We don't know what its x value is though, but we do know that its y value would be three. So let's quickly go find that x value. We can do that by just taking its equation We let the y value equal three, and then we solve for x. Now, depending on how good you are with logs, you should realize that to find x, you're gonna say three to the power of three. And so x will be equal to 27. So that means that the x value at this point is 27. So we're looking at the x values. It says here, determine the values of x for which the y values are less than three. So guys, can you see that 
where are the Y values on this red graph less than three? Well, it's going to be uh, for everything on this side. Can you see all of those Y values are less than three? All of them. They all less than three. If you had to go this way, then the Y values will become larger than three. See? So for which X values is the, are the Y values smaller than three? Well, that's going to be all the X values that are um, 27 or less. But then we must remember that you cannot go over this asymptote. You cannot go over the asymptote. So your X values must at least be bigger than zero because that's where the asymptote is. And we never include the asymptote.